let's talk about programming paradigms. Uh, this is uh, the concept of a paradigm is one of the fundamental ones in software engineering, and it's basically a style of thinking and style of expressing your algorithms, problems, and solutions in uh, constructs of a language. Um, every paradigm is basically a bunch of uh, co language constructs that work well together and they can be used effectively in order to reach uh, a certain goal. So in in this case, I'm showing you uh, a model based on, in, indeed, introducing new language concepts and seeing what kind of paradigms come out of it. It's been composed by Peter van Rooy from Université Catholique de Louvain. Uh, so we start here, and that's uh, when we only have a concept called a record, so basically, basically a bunch of uh, data lumped together. Uh, and then you have descriptive declarative programming. So it's not yet programming per se, but it is a way to represent some data in so-called homo-iconic way, when you uh, can also actually encode some code if you really want, but you need to uh, to fit uh, to make your code fit in the same uh, structure as the uh, as the data. So in XML, then you have like matching tags and stuff like this. In S expression, that's basically the same, but with uh, 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 parentheses, and you can have some, some other representations of JSON probably also fits here. Uh, and then you cannot do everything unless you really uh, uh, make certain uh, additions to this. But I mean, you can declare, you can describe things, and that's why it's called descriptive declarative programming. Uh, then once you have a concept of a procedure or some kind of uh, executable block, then you come into first-order functional programming. So then you don't yet have the, uh, uh, the von Neumann algorithm uh, in a sense of you know sequence of first I do this and then I do that. You don't have to do uh, that, but you already have uh, first-order uh, programming. You can define functions, you can call different functions, and by combinations of those functions, you can already define an algorithm, and that's uh, that's a pretty working paradigm. Usually, it's uh, you know in practice, it's combined with something else, but still, this is already uh, powerful enough to do some stuff. Then, if you do closures, like when you can pass functions to to uh, other functions and uh, uh, let those functions do. Uh, uh, decompose, for example, or add something to, to these functions, then you get like hardcore functional programming. It's not first order, it's higher order as well. And higher order is essential to, to achieve uh, you know, the most interesting stuff in uh, functional programming. And then you can go to the left to this red uh, languages here. Uh, when you have unification, when you kind of... Uh, you declare something and you declare something else and say well you know these things should match and that's where you have deterministic logic programming that's prolog or at least the, the simplest uh, things in prolog fit uh, uh, fit here you can also add search and then you have relational programming which is uh, basically sql but you know sql is also quite heavy on uh, representing the uh, the stuff that you get out of the query uh, so that fits somewhere else, but it's querying stuff, it's, uh, you know, relational algebra, uh, basically, uh, things. That is, uh, that fits here. And this is just, you, you declare what kind of things you want to get out of the database, and it magically then appears. Uh, if you have some solvers, in a sense that you can specify the problem, and the solution will uh, be found automatically by uh, by your system, then you get constraint uh, uh, solving uh, programming. So either either uh, straightforward constraint logic programming or uh, concurrent programming when you can do like several uh, several threads. Uh, and then of course once you add some synchronization you get like lazy concurrent uh, constraint programming uh, and that's where you uh, uh, you, so lazy means that you don't do things before you uh, before you need them, and then you can have some support for you know, infinite data structures and uh, streams and stuff like this. So this is all logic and constraint uh, solving. So you don't have a lot of um, 
the control over your uh, algorithm about how it uh, 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 comes up with a solution but you you know that okay this is my problem and you know how um, uh, what what you want in the uh, solution right but you can go uh, differently you can introduce uh, continuations uh, so that's uh, pretty common in functional programming but it's not essential to uh, to have so continuation is when you uh, uh, basically encapsulate the the, uh, the state of computation, but you don't need to kind of really save it or uh, put it somewhere. But uh, you know it's it is explicitly uh, defined uh, somewhere. So in scheme, well, because of this scheme can do lots of other things. But anyway, uh, the, what what's more important is that then you can have synchronization, you can have threads, and eventually you get. Uh, like really data flow programming. And this is what functional programming in practice usually is about. It's about, uh, you know, getting, uh, uh, caring about data flow and knowing that your data first gets into this function and then propagates there and then gets uh, uh, somewhere else and, uh, and so forth. So this is the, the orange and yellowish thing is they are what in practice is usually called uh, functional programming. Uh, and then you do have some control over the algorithm, but not that much uh, of on a state. So you know, you know where your data comes and how it gets propagated through everything that you have, but that's about it. Uh, you don't, uh, so you know how and which, what kind of stuff will be executed, but you don't have like precise control over, I don't know, memory allocation and, and uh, stuff like this. So then you can start defining types and then you can have more, uh, uh, more control over uh, things that you, uh, that you define. And then so ADT, it's algebraic data type and that's, you know, ML and, and Haskell and uh, languages like this. That's what they, uh, uh, they shine at. Uh, or you have you can have data flow programming with uh, you know non-deterministic choice. So non-determinism is usually kind of shunned uh, uh, in computer science because it's hard to prove properties about it. But in software engineering, you need it because non-determinism helps you deal with real-world interaction. You don't know when you program something. You don't know when your user is going to click on something. You don't know when the transaction will uh, come in. And that's, that's what is non-deterministic uh, about this. Uh, and then, you know, the, then if, we, if you introduce like partial synchronization or points of synchronization, then you have this functional reactive program. That's ELM, for example. Then that's uh, where you really program against events and you're still doing functional stuff, but you know that you are, whatever, whatever you do, you're reacting to input. Instead of, like in Haskell, you kind of, you pretend the input doesn't exist and then you uh, uh, hack around it with, with monads and, and uh, stuff like this to, to make it a bit uh, safe. And then, of course, yeah, clocked computation, that's, uh, you will probably never see it. Uh, anyway, so in this uh, uh, part, you already see uh, states. So first of all, right away, when we uh, were having this first order of functional programming, we could have already introduced state uh, directly. And then we would have, uh, yes, imperative programming. So something like C and something, uh, uh, something uh, you know, procedural and uh, imperative and really von Neumann. First do this, then do this, put something in, uh, in a variable, uh, get something from a variable, you know, stuff like this. Uh, if you add search to it, so if you can, uh, so it's Snowball is a, is a cool example. It's a pretty old language, but it's uh, basically every construction is okay. Let's uh, let's search for this, or let's let's pattern match uh, this. And if it does match, then go there. If it doesn't, go there. So uh, quite a lot of uh, you know, jumps. Very hard to read, but uh, you know it's search based. Uh, and then you can have non-deterministic choice. There was a weird language that Dijkstra created, uh, uh, guarded uh, common language. Uh, that's basically a think of you know switch case statement like C Java style, 
but uh, where you don't know which case will work and basically any uh, case which has a valid condition will, will work. So that's called now guarded pro uh, programming. Usually it's incorporated in some in use together with some other uh, paradigms. Uh, right, and then you can go different ways. So you can uh, work with channels, uh, and that's how you establish relations between uh, between different objects or between different uh, functions. And then you have event loop programming, and eventually this is what you want to have. You want to have like Erlang style of uh, message passing. Uh, that when you have like several uh, things in your program, and they uh, that then threads become a very natural concept uh, because you're you well if, if you're doing stuff asynchronously then you don't care if you do it uh, in a thread or you just uh, um, attach a listener uh, somewhere. What's important is that you uh, you know what to do when you get a message and you just hang there and you wait for uh, for the message. And then, if you have local state, then you have uh, you know active uh, object programming with uh, you know communicating sequential processes and or languages like Occam, like really uh, hardcore uh, tough stuff in uh, uh, in parallel programming. Uh, or you can just immediately go to uh, you know closures and focus focus on them, and then that's where you have like with closures and with with uh, uh, functions records and states you get object-oriented programming or called stateful functional programming but that's a way to incorporate it so oh camel object camel is a very good example of this but scala also uh, fits there it, it could do slightly more than that but uh, it fits pretty well uh, and then if you put threads there then finally you also have your uh, your non-determinism but you also have the state, you also have named state. So uh, you do get real world interaction because of non determinism, but you also get modularity. And you can, uh, uh, with much, uh, much more ease, you can combine stuff and develop stuff, uh, develop components separately than in uh, declarative or even uh, uh, functional programming. And then you know if you add login, then you have uh, the the entire SQL here with you know transactional memory and with uh, 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 with ways to track what what you have done uh, when. So it's uh, not only your state is uh, uh, saved, uh, not only you have a, a closure and continuation and whatnot, but you also remember what you have done, and sometimes that's uh, uh, that's pretty important. Uh, that's it. Uh, so basically, this covers almost every aspect of uh, um, of a programming paradigm ever, except for things like um, typing and uh, and that's a, that's probably it. Well, uh, domain as well, but domain-specific languages can be uh, can be used with anything.